Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have a very special video for you guys, and this is the first part of my playthrough of Medal of Honor Frontline, and we will be playing Medal of Honor Frontline Remastered on the PS3, which actually has some updated graphics and also has iron sights, which the original Medal of Honor Frontline did not. So this is, you know, the first art, the first World War II game that I really played, you know, back in, I think this was 2001 when this game came out, and this game was revolutionary when it came out, and was amazing, and is still to this day one of the best World War II shooters of all time. It has the best soundtrack that you guys can hear in the background, uh, you know, the best missions, a great story, it's just the perfect World War II game. I would give this game honestly a 10 out of 10, and some people say that this is even the best Medal of Honor game of all time. Uh, and also, the reason that I wanted to upload this video today is because today is the uh, anniversary of the Normandy landings, which actually happened June 6th, 1944. So the French resistance had been fighting for a few years, but the Allied liberation of, uh, the Allied liberation of France had begun, the Allied invasion of France, to liberate it from the Nazis. And so, very important day in history today, and uh, it's a lot of these guys are just massive heroes for just the struggles and the things that they went through to stop Nazism and fascism and kick it out once and for all. So thank you guys for watching this series, I hope that you guys enjoy this, and if you're new to, to my channel, uh, do drop a like um, if you enjoy this content, and for people wondering, uh, you know, I do dress up as the characters, so hopefully you guys like my attempt at Jimmy Patterson's um, outfit. Also, if you guys like, are gonna like my, my Medal of Honor Frontline playthrough, be sure to check out my Medal of Honor Rising Sun playthrough, I played that um, last year, Medal of, or earlier this year, I should say, Medal of Honor Rising Sun is in the Pacific Theater, where this is the European Theater, it's in the same universe, um, as as um, uh, as Medal of Honor Frontline. So that one you're fighting against Japan, this one you're fighting against Germany. So if you like this playthrough, do check that one out. Also, I have that linked at the end. So, but anyways, let's start this up here. This, I remember I played this game so much when I was a kid. The um, Medal of Honor Frontline Remastered originally came with a limited edition of Medal of Honor in 2009. You're about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well trained, well equipped, and battle hardened. He will fight savagely. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and lest us all beseech the blessings of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Uh, became president of the United States later on. Okay. Let's do it here. Uh, we're gonna play this on normal difficulty. Uh, we're gonna do modern controls. And when he gets to heaven, to St. Peter he will tell, One more soldier reporting, sir. I've served my time in hell. June 6, 1944. So, I can't imagine how scary this must have been back then. Imagine you're approaching, you know, the beaches of Normandy in one of these boats, and you know the enemy is well dug in and they're in bunkers, and you're just gonna be on the beach.
This is still, I think, the greatest D-Day mission ever in a World War II game. This part, uh, there's soldiers that are trapped due to the machine gun suppressing them. You gotta uh, suppress the bunker back so they can move up. So the remastered version has iron sights, which the original didn't. Okay, we saved this soldier. So what they're doing right now is they're suppressing the bunker so that Patterson can move up and get Jones to blow, blow a hole. Definitely inspired by Saving Private Ryan. We've got cover. Let's step a lane on the other side. Everybody over the seawall. Okay, so now you gotta get across this. It's better to actually go through the craters.
Okay, got the machine gun. MG nest destroyed. But just look, listen to how loud this mission is. Very re realistically captures the immersion of E-Day. into the breach. So this is where we're going to be going through the bunkers now. And, uh... Okay. Patterson, listen up! We need to find a way to signal our crews as we start lobbing shells! Get to the top of this bunker, and I'll take the other one! Move out! There's going to be a, um... a barrel here. Yeah, destroy that barrel. Okay. So I, I can't imagine what these guys must have went through on the the D-Day landings. And like to me, these people like this, like the Americans who stormed the beaches of Normandy, are my The Americans who stormed the beaches of Normandy to me are my celebrities and my real heroes. Because I don't understand how these kids these days just worship these these celebrities, these actors who haven't done anything, really. These guys made a difference. They helped they helped liberate the they helped liberate the world from Nazism. It's just a shame because if you ask so many kids today, would they rather spend the day with like a World War II veteran who spent <laughs> Storm the beaches of Normandy, or or some entitled celebrity. They choose the entitled celebrity. This guy right up here, remember him. If you get too close to him, he drops a grenade. But if you actually shoot, you can actually just shoot him right here. Hear that? Yeah, they're hiding there. Okay, got them all here. Oh, 
Tabak. Yeah, you can just blow those two guys up there. Shoot this barrel too. See that? Yeah, that's why you want to shoot the barrel. the top deck now. Thompson on this part now. Yeah, as much as I love Medal of Honor, in real life, there's no way in hell they would have been able to hear each other across from that, especially with all the gunfire. Okay, that bunker's taken out. Take care of this one now, too. So I'll talk about the history also as I go through this game too. 175,000 Allied soldiers breached the walls of Fortress Europe through intense German resistance. That's By what I liked about these games, they showed the, the floor, real World War II footage. The Allies the port they so desperately needed. By early August, Eisenhower had amassed an Allied army of over one million strong. Treacherous field-to-field -field hedgerow fighting unleashed a breakout across France. With the Germans in full retreat, the Allies marched into Paris. Field Marshal Montgomery moved north into Belgium, while General Patton and the Third Army pushed to the Siegfried Line. It was here that the Allies encountered their newest enemy, the lack of sufficient supplies. Patton's plan was to run straight through the teeth of the Siegfried Line directly to Berlin. Monty had devised a daring airborne operation that had the potential of ending the war by Christmas. Having only enough supplies to support one advance, the fate of thousands rested in the hands of the few. With Allied superiority on land, sea, and air, what could go wrong? So you heard that, how, how he said, with Allied superiority on land, sea, and air, what could go wrong? And you see the paratroopers there in the background. Uh, that's basically... Operation Market Garden when he's saying what could go wrong because Operation Market Garden for the most part failed uh, It was an attempt to break behind enemy lines. Oh, I got a medal It was an attempt to break behind enemy lines with tons of paratroopers um, Secure key bridges and infrastructure But the the main reason that Operation Market Garden failed is because the Allies underestimated the Germans there because Operation Market Garden that was like September, October 1944, I believe. So at that time, the Allies actually believed that the German army was in gonna completely collapse, but they weren't gonna completely collapse yet. The German army, they Germany had pretty much lost the war at this point, but they were still stocked up and they could still keep fighting for some time. The German army was pretty much in collapse, like I would say, like February, March, April 1945. Um, but before then, they were still a very formidable foe, and that was the problem. And there was massively high casualties during Operation Market Garden. They tried to end the war by Christmas, but unfortunately they failed. And uh, Market Garden is actually going to be shown later on in, in the story in this game. But let's continue here. Good morning, Lieutenant Patterson. It's a pleasure to see you again. You're looking well rested. 
Good. I'll need you in tip-top shape for your new assignment. You've proven to be quite resourceful, especially your performance most recently in scuttling U-4901. All things considered, you're the ideal candidate for this mission. So let's get down to brass tacks, shall we? The success of the Allied invasion of Normandy prompted an assassination attempt on the Führer. A cadre of high-ranking Nazi leaders planted a bomb during a meeting. That's the Operation Valkyrie. He's That's the real picture from the explosion. Clean house and solidifies power. Whatever remaining sanity the Nazi leadership possessed has been gutted by Hitler's subsequent arrests and executions. He has appointed new leaders more in tune with his insane ideals. That man is bent on sacrificing every See that guy right there? That's Joseph Goebbels, uh, Nazi minister of propaganda. Really scary guy. He became leader of Germany for a few days after Hitler killed himself, then he killed himself. The Port of Lorient, a manufacturing facility for their deadly U boats. It was previously run by one of the would be assassins. Now Hitler has one of his most trusted advisors in charge. Jimmy, we need to know what's going on at that base. We've arranged for you to be dropped on the outskirts of St. Mathieu, where our 101st Division is still encountering some resistance. Intelligence states that a German U-boat is making an unscheduled resupply stop at the seaport there. Our only opportunity to infiltrate this fortified shipyard is by smuggling you aboard this vessel and waiting until it reaches its port. I know it's tight quarters, Jimmy, but for you, familiar territory. We're sending you back to sea, my boy. And so, um, what I wanted to see also, what I wanted to say also about the D-Day landings, at the time that the Normandy landings actually happened, the Allies actually tricked the Nazis into what beach they were actually going to land at. Um, the Nazis believed that the, that the Americans were actually going to land at Calais, I believe, in France, but the Americans actually tricked them, um, uh, and attacked in Normandy. Now, um, at the time of the Normandy landings, what actually happened was Hitler was actually asleep at the time that it happened, and Hitler had strict orders not to wake him up, um, uh, by, uh, by, no matter the, um, no matter the reason. Now, Hitler, um, would wake up pretty late in the day, um, you know, he would wake up, you know, sometimes 12, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., um, he slept in a lot. And what happened was um, his generals actually tried to wake him up at the time to tell him what was actually happening at Normandy. And, um, and his, um, uh, his soldiers were actually begging him to send the Tiger tanks in. But um, Hitler was actually saying, you don't need the Tiger tanks for that. Uh, they can be used elsewhere. And um, what happened was the, uh, the Germans at Normandy got overrun. But the thing about this is because of Hitler's stupid tactical leadership, you know, they, the Nazis lost a lot of battles. He made a lot of tactical mistakes throughout the war. And, um, yes, and so that, that pretty much happened there. Normandy was liberated, and that was the American foothold in France at that point. Uh, the Americans would actually, the Americans would liberate France pretty quickly from then on. Um, you know, France would be mostly liberated within two months. However, though, there would be some German holdouts that would even be in France until 1945. But those would be, like, on the edges of France in the northern part, I believe. Uh, but anyways, um, let's continue on here. Seaside Stowaway, St. Matthew, uh, France, 17 August 1944, 0, hours. French resistance operatives have spotted a U-boat in the port city of St. Matthew. Ma Matthew. Um, after res resupplying, we believe the submarine will head back to the docking pens at Lorient, the most protected German U-boat base in France. To gain access to the base at Lorient, you must stow away within the cargo being loaded and aboard the U-boat. Uh... You'll be dropped just outside of St. Matthew, beneath um, uh, beneath a tree near your insertion points. Our operative uh, has hidden a small package which will provide you with further instructions once you've actually aboard U-4902. Unfortunately, many of the roads in the village have been blocked or destroyed, or getting across the town to the cargo or loading uh, gate may be no simple task. Although St. Matthew has undergone heavy allied bombing the enemy is still entrenched german forces have even managed to pin down some of our troops from the 101st division that's airborne scattered throughout the area watch for ambushes and enemy machine gun nests if the opportunity presents itself jimmy get to the high ground and provide some much needed assistance best of luck lieutenant break open these crates because a lot of times there's um resistance drop found okay because there's a lot of times there's stuff that you can find in them man i love the soundtracks in these games
And, um... If you guys notice how I'm wearing the American helmet, um, the American helmet, I'm actually wearing it without the chin straps. And, um, this is actually how a lot of the soldiers actually wore the helmets back then. So, like, in, um... In a lot of World War II movies and games, and even, like, real-life World War II footage, you see the soldiers don't wear the... the American soldiers don't wear the chin straps on their helmets, so... Why is that? Because these helmets are also pretty heavy. And the thing about that is that if the American soldier that was actually wearing a helmet, if they had their chin strap and they got pushed by like an explosion, if like an explosion threw them back but didn't necessarily kill them, the chin strap actually might snap their neck when they get thrown back by an explosion. And so that's actually the reason that they didn't wear the chin straps. Also, as for the Valkyrie plot that actually happened that they were talking about from the same, um, you know, a lot of people know it from the movie Operation Valkyrie with Tom Cruise, but that actually happened in July of 1944. It happened right after the Normandy landings where they tried to blow Hitler up with a bomb and tried to replace him and negotiate with the Allies. The, it failed. And the, the, suit, the bomb was in a suitcase. It was put right next to Hitler's feet at the meeting. It was this, this was in Nazi-occupied Poland in his bunker. Um, I think it was the Wolf's Lair, now the, the place that was called. Now, the reason that Hitler actually didn't get blown up, Hitler survived shrapnel, but he didn't die. Uh, the reason that he didn't get blown up is because the, the suitcase actually moved at the last moment. Yeah, that would not destroy a panzer in real life with Frank, but, um... This is an optional objective you can do in this mission. Okay, there we go. clear for the most part here. I always hated going down the ladders in these games. I was always scared I was going to fall. But, um, uh, what the commander there was saying, um, uh, when he was saying that, that, uh, Hitler would, would refuse any kind of negotiations, 100% right on that, um, Hitler, Hitler was never going to negotiate with the Allies. Um, for him, it was he was going to sacrifice every single, every single last German, every single one, to fight till the very end, uh, no, no matter what. Um, and in Hitler's eyes, like surrender was worse than death. Now, um, uh, Hitler, uh, at the end of the war, what actually happened was Hitler gave specific orders to Albert Speer, who Albert Speer was uh, Nazi Germany's head architect. And the orders that he gave Speer at the time is he told Speer to, um, uh, to destroy uh, all key German infrastructure before it falls into Allied hands. And this key German infrastructure, this wasn't just, you know, things like you'd think like bridges, you know, train tracks, but this was bridges, train tracks, hospitals, schools, farms were to be burned down, factories destroyed, you know, things that Germany would need after the war. And what happened is Speer knew that the war was already lost at that point. And if Speer just did that, that the Germans would suffer even more. And Speer actually told Hitler, he said, don't do this, because if you destroy all the German infrastructure, our people are going to suffer tremendously after the war. And Hitler basically told him 
that all the true Germans have already died, and that the Germans that are still left are weak and they deserve to be destroyed. So that's the type of guy that Hitler was. He was going to sacrifice every single last one of his people. He was not going to accept defeat no matter what. Okay, that's a tiger tank right there. Yeah, I haven't played this game in a very long time. But yeah, Hitler is one of the most evil men in history, but it's the... No matter how, how quickly you rush, you actually can't save this guy before he gets executed. And um, what I was saying about that order that Hitler gave earlier, um, so what ended up happening, uh, even though Hitler gave the order to destroy all key German infrastructure, uh, Speer actually disobeyed the order because he didn't want to, he didn't want to see Germany completely destroyed after the war ended. Now, as Speer was actually one of the only top Nazis that was actually spared the death penalty. Most of the Nazis at Nuremberg actually got the death penalty. They got hanged or they got shot. But Speer was actually one of the few who actually didn't. He got, um, he served some time in prison and then got out. Now, um, uh, that was actually the main reason that he actually didn't, uh, get executed because of that. Because he stopped, uh, he disobeyed Hitler's orders. But here's the thing. Even though what Speer did was a good thing that he stopped he stopped destroying the German infrastructure and refused to do it. Uh, Speer was still a really bad man. He wasn't totally evil like Hitler, but he was still a bad man because Speer had actually used concentration camp prisoners as forced labor, slave labor, to build um, weapons and build other key um, uh, German infrastructure for the war. And Speer knew about this. He tried to say that, that he didn't fully know about this, but he knew about this. I do like reading history a lot, and World War II is one of those things I do like reading a lot about. Okay, so this is a fueling dock. Okay, so here we stow away on the submarine. So we will, um, uh, uh, we will, oh, I don't think I got a, a, a medal yet for this. I think after the next mission I could get a medal. Um, uh, but we will wrap this up here, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed, um, this. I'll have the next part for you guys as soon as I can. Uh, and it's like I said, you know, this is a childhood favorite game of mine. I love this game so much. And, you know, today is the anniversary of the Normandy landings, which, you know, these guys went through hell. For us these guys went for hell they they went through hell for us to defeat the nazis and to help liberate um liberate the world liberate europe from the nazis uh the nazis were one of the most evil groups that ever existed in history and you know these guys like i said are are my celebrities these are my true heroes after what these guys uh what these guys went through oh and just defeating this evil 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 group this this evil government this evil man hitler one of the worst human beings ever but unfortunately so many kids these days they don't care about the sacrifices these guys went through they don't care they don't care or they don't know either one and even when you try to teach kids about you know the things these guys went through kids don't care like back when i was a kid we were fascinated by world war ii veterans we were and i'm not saying that you know that kids today aren't but i just see a much less interest in that you know kids today they care more about the celebrities and what they're posting on social media than than these guys you know there's not a lot of these guys around anymore today and that's the really sad thing about that and so many people are forgetting about them but um thank you guys for watching i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did do drop a like and i'll have the next part for you guys as soon as i can thank you for watching take care everyone have a wonderful day guys